What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we are doing a rebuild, a realistic style rebuild of the Dallas Cowboys, a team that I know Dak Prescott is hurt now, right? But a team that even before he was injured, struggling to pick up wins, they are now 2-5, and five, so a team that I did not expect to need a rebuild this year, apparently kinda needs one, you know, once again, like I said, before Dak got uh, injured, they were still iffy, they were still iffy, the contract situation uh, over there is definitely kinda getting bad because Demarcus Lawrence just has not been the Demarcus Lawrence we know, so... Obviously, there could be a problem in real life. In-game, though, he's still an X-Factor, which is strange because he is an 86 overall, which is potentially the lowest non-rookie X-Factor in the game, if I'm not mistaken. It would not surprise me at all, of course. Still looks decent in-game, but definitely lacking in real life. Of course, on the offensive side, I move CD Lamb to number two because he seems to be getting more success, more... Uh, yards than Gallup, and he has superstar development, so obviously that helps. Alawale, get the hell in there. Uh, Andy Dalton going to be the starting quarterback. We could put in Dak for, you know, the, the first couple of games, but it doesn't matter. We have the force wins slash losses set. As far as the uh, running backs, obviously Zeke is a freak, although he has been on the decline slightly this year. I'm not going to blame him, though, because the line, it's not the same line that you're used to seeing. So as much as people still want to say, oh, well, the uh, the Dallas Cowboys are line sick. They have one of the worst lines right now, especially due to injuries. So there's that. Uh, of course, looking at the defensive side of things, uh, not much better, maybe even worse, debatably. This team has taken quite a bit of a hit. I ain't going to lie. They still have a lot of important pieces that you can work with and hopefully develop. Can we afford Dak? Hopefully, if we can't, I'm going to cry. We're also going to use a real class because, of course, uh, this team is starting off this rebuild at 2-5. and five, So, definitely, definitely not a guarantee that they're going to be picking outside the top 15. All right, so I don't know how uh, Cowboys fans feel on Dak Prescott, but I got to think with the way things are going without him there, you got to sign him a five-year 170 million dollar deal how much does that come out to comes out to 34 a year which definitely uh easily what he was asking for personally i think you could probably get him for like 30 flat now i think it's a it's a win i wouldn't say a win win but there's a very good chance chadobi is asking for a lot considering how average he is here i'll give him a four-year deal but dak realizing that the nfl you know there's no guarantees in the nfl so Maybe willing to take a, a really good contract, but less than he wanted, quote unquote. But at the same time, uh, he can obviously see what the team is looking like without him. So I'm not really exactly sure. As, as far as uh, salary goes, I don't know if there's anyone we can get rid of, but I think Dallas is just kind of in you know, a spot where they just have so many good players that they pretty much have just tied everything to those players. Uh, Crawford, I suppose, you can get rid of uh, after the season would be a nice little savings or just let him go in general. Uh, what else do we have? Zach Martin about to be making a ton. Ooh, we got some expensive players coming up. Honestly, I, I just don't think there's much you can really do with this team. You kind of just have to let it ride and hope you draft well. All right, headed to the playoffs. We obviously miss, and we actually finish with, in this case, not a bad record. I like 14-2, uh, 14-2, 4-12, because obviously we're going to have a probably a top five pick. And honestly, if you have a, a top two, we might be able to make some... Uh, some crazy trade down with a team that really needs QB. Obviously, we draw, uh, re signed Dak Prescott. The realistic move, in my opinion. As far as uh, stats go, Zeke was decent. Dalton was not receiving. I don't want to talk about it. Maybe Gallup gets traded off. I mean, you got to think that that's an option for Dallas. I don't know what his contract situation is, but, you know, uh, Alden Smith, 11 sacks. Got to love that because he's going to be gone. Because he literally just is not worth it. He's going to retire on us here. In real life, you can probably get away with it. Maybe like a. A, another one year like five mil or something but in game they'll ask way more than that as far as yearly awards go maybe we would have had offensive rookie of the year uh number four fair enough and no other awards there zeke with best running back and best uh, kicker with greg the leg zerline but really, like I said, nothing much to do. We just go straight to the Super Bowl. See who's in it is the Saints versus the Chargers here. The winner of that one is the Chargers. I actually had a feeling that was going to happen, and it did. 
Looking at potential dev ups, unless it's a defensive player, I just do not see it happening. And we may have forgotten to put auto upgrading on, but honestly, who really cares at this point? Besides all of you, of course. Uh, looking at Joe Thomas, uh, 30 years old, gets to star development. Obviously, we love it. I mean, just what a... I mean, it's just so awesome that that happens. Uh, but yeah, looking at what we need to get, corner's definitely on the list. We didn't give Jordan Lewis, you know, an all-time deal. I think we give him a two or a three-year. A safety could be nice. D-line on the interior. I mean, D-line in general, of course, uh, would be nice. Alden obviously gets to star. Uh, as far as offense goes, we do get uh, Mr. Tyron and Lyle Collins back. So really all you need is maybe a center. And then, of course, if you have to pay uh, Williams. But you can pretty much put Baidez at center anyway. So... I say we trade off Pollard, we let Dalton go, we trade Gallup off. Maybe those two combined can pretty much add up to a first round pick. And I, it's, I mean, it's really not much I can else, you know, say else other than that. Uh, like I said, with Gallup, how much does he want? Gallup means a con. Yeah, we got to trade him off to a team. The Packers might not be a bad bet. Packers have been looking to trade for wide receivers. Gallup is a pretty sturdy one, right? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm dead wrong. They're like, ah. Uh, he never plays for us. What are you on about? But we're going to look at free agency. We're not going to spend big money because we literally just can't. <laughs> we really cannot do it because, once again, those contracts bumped hard, specifically at the offensive line spot uh, and, of course, quarterback. Uh, anyone here that we can get rid of? Chidobia Wuzier, like I said, I really didn't like the contract, but what can you do? Anthony Brown, is he tradable? I mean, get value for him, but he's not technically tradable. 79 overall, I mean, I'll never know. Yo, why did they do this? Why in the world did they do that? That is, okay, that is not a good... Uh, Leighton Vander Esch might need to be traded here. I don't know what we can do, though. This is a tough one, okay. Definitely going to make some trades. That's the number one thing. So we trade Gallup in a seventh round pick to the Packers for 51 and 147. As far as Pollard goes, running backs aren't super, super sought after, but still has some value Maybe find a team that's drafting really late in the third and perhaps, you know, get something for them. Or we give the Dolphins Pollard in a fourth next year for 65 this year, kind of going all in on this class, which this was actually a random one I grabbed. I do not know really anything about the players in this one, so this could be a, a bad, but more of a fun thing. We might have to just trade down hard here, honestly. I really don't know what else we can do. Anthony Brown, I mean, we're not saving money, and I, like you can't nah, you can't lose roster spots that aren't going to save you money in the long run, you know? Or just even right now. As far as money, we are literally just broke, so uh, unless we can find someone expensive to release, we're pretty much going to have to ignore free agency. We can get rid of Randy Gregory, but I mean, that's not really saving us much. Alawale can't do anything with. I mean, these are... This is a tight tight roster here for uh salary wise jeez maybe we should have let jordan lewis go usually they do don't they they actually sometimes let both corners go oh well we got a uh, a leighton vander Esch option honestly with how much i know he goes for we might have to just trade him and then hopefully draft two good linebackers in this class we'll see i do have a few i do not know if i have enough to uh to do that though this is obviously going to be a monster and i mean monster draft it's going to be a tough one, and hopefully we can at least land three, maybe four starters in this one. With pick four, we have to see who's there. Number one overall is Mr. Sewell. I could actually Sewell it happening. I'm sorry. Of course, these two picks should be QB. Both of them, somehow they're not. How in the world? How? There's no way. I'm trading this to Washington for a massive deal. I don't know what we can get from Washington, but they are going to take a QB here. I want it all. Honestly, I kind of want it all like this year, if that's possible. Hmm, I think we can get a first next year as well. Can we? Ooh, we got 941 and then their third round pick for pick four, which this will be Trevor Lawrence. And it is the steal of a lifetime. I love this game. Dill Moses was on our list. Rousseau was on our list. And Kyle Pitts was on our list a little bit, but we have so much talent here. I mean, honestly, with this pick, we could take uh, we could take Patrick Certain if we wanted to. Now, this is a tough one because, of course, uh, lineman isn't that big of a need. But right now, I'm going to put my list together. And this is how my list goes. 
Tywin, Tymon at the first spot. Of course, uh, fast enough to play Edge if you really had to. Certain at number two. And then Wyatt Davis right there at number three. I just do not know how we could pass on Tymon when our, uh, our defensive line, the DT specifically, is really rough. We could also still end up trying to get Asante Samuel a little bit later. Hopefully his name will carry a dev that's decent. Uh, I mean, there's some names here. We still have we still have stills, <laughs> but we could also still take him later. So there's uh, there's options. This is tough because I think certain. Uh, I wish we'd have got rid of a Chidobi, but hey, my controller dies. I think we're taking time and please, for the love of God, be hidden. Ooh, 74 overall. It says he's supposed to go 30 in true talent, but I mean, he looks pretty good to me. That stamina's rough. The uh, power move is great. Finesse is decent. Block shed's decent. Strength is decent. Fast. We may have sold. I'm I'm going to be honest. We may have sold. Farley over certain. Certain. Wow, the Giants with a huge pick. What do the Jaguars take? They had pick five and six, I believe. Wow, this the Niners with a steal at guard. That O-line's looking dangerous. We really only need one safety, so as much as I want Holland, who is now gone, uh, I think we can pass up on him just for the fact that all we need is one safety because the other one we could easily trade for someone on the trade block. I don't know what the re-signing is going to cost us, but probably not much for a safety, right? Uh, as far as what we need, though, linemen, uh, if he could play guard, I didn't get to finish scouting him. I ran out of points. I mean, it's really between Stills, Mayfield, and Samuel. Samuel does look the most iffy, however... I have seen this man with uh, Star more often than not. I'm debating what I want to do here. We should trade Anthony Brown if we go for uh, Samuel, though. Hmm, this is tough. This is tough. Because I also kind of want Mayfield to play line. Uh, Stills looks really good. I think we should trade up for him. All right, we're going to go with Asante Samuel Jr. Please be hidden. He is, thank you, maybe even Superstar? Maybe? I don't know, but obviously a great pick. Oh, we have pick nine. I forgot about that. Stills? If he stills there, <laughs> one of them be there? I don't know why I said one of them be Like, they obviously have to be there. That's kind of the whole point. Mayfield or Stills? We do have Tristan Hill. How old is he? 23 now. A bit raw, but if that other guy's normal, then we're kind of screwed anyways, aren't we? Honestly, we're going to take Stills. Screw it. And screw it indeed, because he is hidden development. Now, the reason why I said screw it is because, honestly, maybe we put the DT we drafted in the first round at edge. It might be, you know, might be a little reachy from us, but I don't know. And then here, if Mayfield's there, we might actually take him as well. I highly doubt he'll be here, though. Although we're getting there. Two away. Last one. Ooh, do we take him? I've seen him have a star before, but this is obviously a brand new class, so I have no idea. Screw it, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. <sighs> Hidden. 69 overall, which is worrisome. Oh, he's good. He's actually really... Oh, he can play guard. Oh, this has been a very good draft. Now, going to pick one in the third. We do have a linebacker, I believe. I don't know if he's going to be there. Oh, we have some picks. And we could still trade uh, Leighton Van Der Esch here. Depends on if we want something. That oh, did Snowden go? I was actually going to draft him because I think he's a decent pass rusher. Uh, I don't know why he was that middle linebacker, but he just was. As far as Trayvon Morig goes, late third. This is a bit reachy, but I really like the zone coverage. The age is nice, and of course, the combine's not bad. Even if he's normal, I think we can develop him. I really think we can. And we may have to start going CPU-only drafts because another hidden if this wasn't CPU, if this was CPU, we would have maybe hit one out of all of the draft picks we've had so far. Oh my. Oh my. These draft picks have been insane. Paris Ford is still there. Yo, did I think Paris Ford was going to be gone ages ago or something? Give me Paris Ford. Welcome to the squad. Of course. <laughs> it's always the guys that look so obvious. Oh, corner though. Is he a corner? I'm so confused. It's always the guys that look so obvious that suck, isn't it? Nice. All right, for the next pick, when is that Gatorade guy? What's his name? Gautier. <laughs> Honestly, he's like really the last guy we have. This guy could be worth going for as well, but he's the last guy we have. I think I'm going to trade up. I know, call me crazy, but like, 
I just do not want to lose him. So we're going to go to the Jaguars at nine, from 19. I don't know what else we have here. 100. A fifth round pick, please. I mean, it's decently high of an up, but it's not crazy, right? Hmm. Pick 83, a fifth next, and Darian Thompson for 70 from the Jaguars, which, of course, will be this linebacker. I think he's coverage. He might be another Snowden type, though. Pierce, okay, pass coverage, really good pursuit, decent man. Actually, really good man for a linebacker. I don't really care as long as he's de <laughs> decent. Another hidden development player. I mean, I I can't look at the devs because obviously it'll just completely ruin the thing. But, I mean, the overall seem all right. It's just the hiddens are through the roof. Do we maybe take a look at what the other players are like? Maybe they're not hitting hiddens at all and we're just pretty much taking them all. Who's this? Quitty pay. Ooh, he's slow though. Anthony Schwartz could be a little bit of a steal here. Mid-fifth. Do we just take him and end our draft there? We also have Zion Johnson, who looks okay. Do we just reach? Screw it. Anthony Schwartz, the speed demon. 68 of first normal. Or no, second normal, because we had Paris Ford. Super fast. The perfect number three. If you guys remember, we had him. Was he undrafted? I don't remember. But in one of our franchises, we had him. He was a pass rusher. Or a pass rusher. A kick returner for us. What a draft. Zion Johnson, uh, decent overall. Let's go to the seventh round and get ourselves a punter. Maybe we can get rid of Chris Jones and save a little bit of money. Wait, is this this year? Yo, when do we get all these picks? Oh, that's there. I'm so stupid. I was thinking of our franchise that we have, obviously, with the Rams. That threw me off hard. Connor McGovern, that's actually kind of a win for them. Really, they don't want to take it straight up. I'd be... I'm shocked. All right, we trade uh, Sims with him. Over the punter's still there. It's a seventh round pick. It's nothing crazy. McGovern's not a bad pick there, especially with the Rams lacking in that department. Tyson Dyer looked like the best punter to me, so I'm going to take him. 70 overall, normal, good enough for me. Now, what's that salary cap looking like? That's the question. Of course, for devs, uh, anyone that gets mad, oh, he's showing dev elements, it's cheating. Well, we're pretty, we're literally going to start everyone, so, you know, just relax yourself. Jalen Tyman, Tywinman, might be our edge rusher, 290, but... Pretty damn fast for an, uh, a DT. Ooh. I think we have to put him on the edge, right? Is Lawrence a left end? I think Lawrence is a left end. Uh, Asante Samuel, once again, another guy that maybe has a chance to also be superstar because of the name. Please, just X Factor? Why not? Maybe this guy loves him. Okay, start of element. Fair enough. Uh, then we have the DT Stills, who is going to be the starting defensive tackle for us. Mr. Darius Stills. Does he have a brother in the draft? There was another Stills. Obviously, it's not the craziest name in the world. Star development for Stills. Moving on to Mayfield. I'm almost certain this guy's going to be star because I've seen a lot of different classes, like 10 different classes with him at star. And he has... Okay, he does have star as expected. Probably going to put him at guard. Uh, does this guy have hidden? He did, which is a little shocking considering Paris Ford didn't have uh, hidden. Trayvon... Star development. Maybe that's why Ford slipped, because I, I think I took him off the list, because I thought he was a first-round talent. And then for our final player, might even be the number one. Now nah, we'll put him at number... Uh, we'll put him at the left-outside linebacker spot. Uh, Gatorade. Star development. All right. But obviously, a sick draft, and ironically enough, using that quote-unquote good karma, because of course it is a user-created, so you know we were kind of bound to have somebody decent uh, using that good karma on a team that doesn't really need it. Love it. Darian Murray, the backup running back. Oh, my. We are broke. This uh, Trayvon Morig, or whatever his name is, is actually pretty solid. Really good uh, zone coverage, and then his catching is solid, I'm pretty sure, as well. Put him at number 33, I guess. I don't like 28 at all for uh, DBs. Ugh, 40 for Ford. I don't know what he played in real life, but I do not want him to have 40. I don't want a punter. Uh, Chris Jones released. Save about 1.5 mil. I didn't want Billy Turner or Rick Wagner, however. They couldn't afford this. Otherwise, we trade a Leighton Vanderish, Anthony Brown for pick 17. Maybe we keep Wagner. I don't think we'll keep Billy Turner, though. Kind of depends on how much of a hit they had to take. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm pretty sure both of those contracts are kind of locked in, so I'm not really sure how it cleared up cap. Ooh, they're not. Okay, see you later, Billy, and see you later, Rick Wagner. Bye. Hey, we got a first-round pick. I don't know how Green Bay is going to do, but that is obviously beyond fair. Uh, Anthony Brown still had a year or two on his contract, and then Leighton Vander Esch. 
I don't know how much he'll ask for, but I don't, I don't know. They need a linebacker. Packers haven't had a good linebacker since probably A.J. Hawk. So A.J. Hawk, Nick Barnett, one of those two. Yeah, Zach Martin, that's the guy we're going to replace. Uh, Connor Williams needs to be traded too. I think we can trade Connor Williams to the Dolphins for like a, a fourth. I know we're disassembling the team, but we have to to pay Dak and Cooper and all these guys asking for a ton of money. So really the only offensive lineman position we need to replace is center. But I mean, even then you could just be like, hey, you got a bad center. Big deal. As far as tight end goes, we definitely need to draft someone. So we're going to look at tight end in the trade block, release some of these players, fill up the squad with players that we actually need, and hopefully uh, everything will be good. Maybe we even trade uh, the guard for a tight end. Who knows? You really could not ask for a better deal. They had a yellow interest in Connor Williams, and is one of their biggest needs. I think pick the second or third biggest need was left guard. I am now hoping, though, that Foster Moreau does still have star, because uh, he normally does. And he does, of course. A little bit of a budget tight end for us, but it is what it is. He still has an extra year on the contract. It's fun. I would like to get rid of Blake Jarwin, but, I mean, it's not really saving much. You know what? Even though it's not saving much, screw it. Dead cap for the season. I don't think we have to re-sign anybody. I think we got rid of all the guys we need to re-sign, ironically enough. But at least we solved uh, something, kind of. I was literally looking for backups, and I find J.D. Spielman. Hidden development... I mean, I can't really afford to re-sign guys like that, so I don't know what we'll do with him, but as for right now, he'll be on the roster. I think Schwartz is still going to start, especially if he gets a breakout. The XP boost alone will probably catch him up to that guy, actually more than that probably, and of course the contract doesn't hurt us. I'm also looking for some sort of linebacker that we can maybe develop until we get back to the draft or free agency. Not really liking anyone here, I'm not going to lie. Oh, Javen White, to be fair, the fast man himself. Yeah, screw it. Jordan Lewis with a plus two to speed. I mean, he was plus one twice, but still, it's nice. I rhymed twice. What? So see, oh, wow, nice upgrade again. Plus two to speed after eight upgrades. Absolute monster upgrading here. Makes him a pretty damn solid wide receiver. And after all of the upgrades, we go from a 79 overall to apparently only an 80, which is a little surprising there. Uh, of course, starting all of our rookies, uh, well, you can't really see him on offense, but Mayfield on uh, one of the rookies, Schwartz at number three. Of course, Spielman should be at number four. Not that it's really going to matter, I think. There's a lot of potential here on offense. you got a great running back, great wide receiver, great wide receiver number two that's going to develop. Two really good uh, superstar linemen. Lel Collins is really solid. Mayfield should be like a 76 by the end of the season. Moreau could be someone you replace, but I didn't, you know, hate the trade uh, with the left guard, Connor Williams. And then Dak Prescott, really wish he wasn't injured. 28 years old, can't really upgrade too much more, but I think he's got all the ratings right now to dominate. And then as far as defense goes, definitely would have liked to get another linebacker. We did do what we were, you know, said we were going to do. But unfortunately, we had to trade Leighton because we just can't afford him. I put Samuel at number two, but honestly, with Lewis being an 81 overall now, I think we're going to keep Samuel at number three, which is probably going to ruin him. But whatever. Superstar development and star development DT. Star development safety. Ford hopefully gets a dev up. Not a bad class at all. Damn it. What a sell. Come on, Anthony. We're having an iffy season. Let's take a look at our resignings. Uh, Murray maybe as a backup. Spielman, once again, too expensive. Javen White, maybe. I mean, if he has a really good season, maybe we resign him. Just a bunch of backup level talent. So we, we did what we needed to do, and we did technically get, maybe not better, but in the future better. And it's in the playoffs, and let me tell you what a run it was. We did lose to, did we lose to Washington twice there? We might have. We might have, but at one point, we were 3-3 three and three right here. Then we won so many games, and we end up losing to the Bucks and Washington. So, I mean, fair enough, but obviously a really good season. 11-5 going against the Saints in the wild card round at home. Dak, pretty damn good performance. 4,400 yards, 32 touchdowns, 5 picks. Rushing Zeke, crush it as he always does. Receiving Cooper, really good. Schwartz, not bad. Moreau, pretty good for yards, and then Lamb, a little disappointing. O-line, uh, really, really lockdown O-line. Chidobi could go up to superstar. Jalen could go up to superstar, and Ford, Better go to star. Sack totals, it's EA. We're not going to complain. Pick totals, it's EA. We're not going to complain. Zerline blocked twice, so 
missed two kicks on his own. Punting, if you want to see it. I mean, that looks pretty average. Nothing really special to say. I don't know what we would have maybe won. Offensive rank number one. Noish. Not bad at all. Dak at seven. Maybe a rookie award. Who knows? We did not. We were so close. That hurts. That hurts. Number one, running back, wide receiver, and O-lineman. And then that's pretty much it. But a really good season. Obviously in the playoffs and ready to face the Saints. We're an 84 overall after starting 80 in the uh, you know the start of the preseason. Going up against those 86 overall New Orleans Saints. All right, going to the end of the game. Saints come out swinging. We come out not. I mean, you look at this Dallas roster. We do have some holes, don't get me wrong. But if I had to play that roster, I'm scared for my life, right? I'm going over the middle to my tight ends. Even then, I'm scared because you got Jalen Smith. Of course, here, EA is just not having it. It's Dallas's roster, damn it. And we're just struggling beyond belief. Uh-oh. Oh, oh it's, it's over. Never mind. <laughs> it's a GG. Uh, defense absolutely sold there. There was a chance for the offense. And, you know, obviously the offense sucked. But defense really did not help. Uh, well, I can't really say sucked. Three touchdowns. They had three as well. So, like... Hmm, just a close game, I guess. There's not really much else to say. Sack totals, no one cares. Pick totals, Chidobi with two. Maybe developing into that number one look. All right, headed to the bowl of soup. I actually could go for a bowl of soup right now. The Packers super scammed us. So we have pick 31 from that uh, Leighton Van Der Esch, Anthony Brown trade. So anyone complaining about that one? Boom, there you go. Speaking of boom, there you go. Any development ups on offense? There would be no, please be a thousand here. That is what I'm talking about, baby. Of course, the linebackers, all three of them, went up. One development each. Of course, Ford shockingly didn't go up, but I will take what we just got. Javen White, I did not plan on getting him a contract, but you know, depending on what he wants now... Might give him that contract. We'll see. If it's anything under three a year, I'll do it. And he does not want that much. Okay, welcome to the team, buddy. We gave him a pretty decently long-term deal, of course, back up at worst, so I love it. All right, headed to free agency week one. Seven mil to work with. Looking at the roster, I do not know who the resign. I think Foster Moreau is on the list. Uh, Cooper's obviously locked. I hope pretty much the offensive line is locked in place outside of the tight end, who actually did have a decent season. Looking at the defensive side of things, DT number two. Don't know what Lawrence's contract is looking like, but I mean, honestly, we have everything locked down. So unless you find like a, a contract that we can evade and get someone better for, I mean, I think we pretty much just have to keep playing seasons and, you know, there we go. I'm not really, you know, hating what we got going on here. I actually, I kind of like what's going on. Maybe a kicker, but, I mean, that's not really something you could necessarily fill. So, yeah, DT and tight ends, really the biggest things we could do. Seven mil to work with, of course. Devontae Adams will never leave unless it's his choice. Gallup finally gets let go after two seasons. All right. For anyone mad at me, do you see Anthony Brown anywhere? Please don't be there. <laughs> I don't see him. I don't see Leighton Vander Esch anywhere when he is the hen he anywhere either so I don't know what you're hating on bro I hate Sue but I feel like he fits Dallas perfectly one year deal at DT um hello <laughs> hello new kicker alert I don't even know if we can afford him how much is Greg Zerline making Greg Zerline wasn't bad for us though let's find some money and then if we get this guy we can release Greg we got a Damon Harrison. So DT, I mean, it kind of matters, but there's always a good older DT in the free agency that you could probably just sit as your backup anytime. So, uh, or at number two. So we might skip on DT. I don't know. Sullivan, Tabor, Sweat, all decent backups. All right, so we have an interesting draft uh, lined up here because we have a tight end who skipped the combine. That's not super common. However, you also have Stephen Battle or Stefan Battle who also skipped the combine, but might be better now, the fact that they're both pretty solid, I'm willing to just kind of let it fly, see what happens. We also have Ballard, so we have options at the late end of the first round. It'd be kind of nice to get both of them, though, so I'm going to go all the way down, and whoever is, you know, 
first tight end off the board, we will be taking the second one. Unless we have choice at both, which is going to be a pain. Because I think I'm going to take the guy that has the combine revealed. Because, cool, he skipped the combine. The other guy didn't, and he crushed it. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely be taking that guy. Patriots, of course, Adrian Jones. Really good pass rushing player, it looks like. Late first tight end. Could actually be, like, right around here. Hopefully it's not Stefan. Oh, there's choice. So we don't get our choice, but it is my favorite choice. So it's the better of the two, I think. We just didn't get to technically pick. Let's go to the Buffalo Bills. If this guy's worse than the other one, I would be absolutely shocked. Uh, athletically wise, definitely not. But if, if he is somehow, that's messed up. A fourth round pick for five spots. I don't know if that's fair or not. 24, a fourth next, and a nine, or a nay for pick tw uh, 19. So they get our youngster. We get their draft pick. Stefan Battle, please be good. He is normal development. Uh, basically like a Noah Fant clone. We kind of got scammed. He's a lot worse than I would have expected. However, in a user league, I don't know. I guess, you know, with that decent run block, you're not absolutely destroyed, but it doesn't feel great. And then with this pick, because we do have the option to actually put Thai women at uh, Thai women. Okay, if you hey, what you're into what you're into, man. <laughs> uh, we can actually put uh, our right end back at DT and then put this guy at end, depending on what this guy's like. So I think I'm going to do that. Trade a next year third for this, probably. We give them 31 this, 68 next, and then Trayvon Diggs, who just is not the guy. Now we will be taking another bust. I can't wait. Let's actually see who's here because, you know, maybe there's someone else that's better. Uh, potential DT type, but ultimately I think this pass rusher has a little bit more potential. And if he is actually good, you know, we basically get a DT anyways because obviously our guy can move back to DT. Paul Ballard, please be good. He is, but he's normal development. Super fast, a bit raw, but he's definitely good. This is a tough one. I think this guy could just be like a depth piece that you just hold on to until maybe the DT position does get dry and then you're forced to move the other guy back. I don't know. We'll see. It's kind of a 50-50 to me. Uh, we do have other tight ends, but honestly, there's just no one that's going to replace the guy we have. Uh, I think Moreau, we're going to trade off for like a fifth round pick or something and then just start this tight end, hope for the damn best. We also do have a guard. Sean Spears could play center. Uh, we also have Glenn Jones, who looks like a can't miss, so... I think as far as what we got to draft, we have to draft one of these players. This guy looks pretty good, too. Jamie Knott. I do not know who we should... <laughs> Knott. <laughs> Let's go to our next pick. If the guard is there, we're just going to take him at 24. Expect another normal development. Remember when I said if this wasn't a user class, the draft would suck? Yeah, uh, that's because it would, and it is. <laughs> it's not good. So far, uh, Greg Chaney, I was thinking maybe grab him as a tight end. Then I saw all the good tight ends. I was like, ah, screw it. Sean Spears, just be hidden, dude. Just be hidden. Oh, my lord. It's so hard to draft. It's so hard to draft. Who's our fourth-round player at corner? I mean, don't get me wrong. We don't really need corner per se. But as far as a non-first-round corner goes, that guy is about as guaranteed as you can get. So I am willing to do our final trade-up. Screwing over next year's draft, hardcore but hopefully landing our first and only hidden of this draft. I don't know if that was the guy. Probably is. He is not. Glenn Jones is the guy. Can't wait for like a 74 to 76 overall normal development guy that'll never start and be released in a free agency. I don't want to give him Chandon Sullivan, but Giles Harris, Chandon Sullivan, and pick 88 this for pick 70 from then this. But oh well, here we are taking our final player in. It's only the third round. Can't wait to bust out of this as well. Glenn Jones, mid-fourth, 71. Not even close in overall. Of course, with decent speed, decent height, good youth, and good catching, he's obviously got a massive amount of potential, but obviously for us, I don't, I don't know if he'll ever find a spot in the starting rotation, really. And honestly, I don't even feel like I've seen any breakouts for for defenders so if it's not through the regular season he's never going to dev up and obviously like we said probably won't get a spot maybe four five yeah not a great draft so much potential i don't remember exactly every name we could have had but i do want to take a look at some of those names like the tight end we know we could have had i didn't know exactly when though so you know it's kind of a 50 50 cannot wait for nav hidden i mean i like 
We chose the better player. I mean, there's no question about it. We did choose the better player. Actually, I don't know what our guys' traits are. Yeah, we definitely chose the better player, but they were both just not good, I guess. I mean, look at the developments, man. Once again, I don't know what EA's coding is. I mean, it's not good, is for one. But I don't know what the coding is. Maybe, you know, the higher draft pick you go, the better chance you have at a breakout. So it kind of counters that. But first five picks, all normal development. For six picks, normal development. Seven normal development. That's got to be hidden. Nope. I sounded like that meme. Nine picks. The first nine. No hidden development. This guy will be not hidden. 89 power. Oh, my, though. Look at this. The first 13 picks. Finally a hidden. And guess what? It's the safety position. One of the easiest positions in the game. Top three easiest to develop. <laughs> Watch him be like X Factor or something. Star. What, what am I talking about? That is nuts. The first 13 picks of the draft. Normal dev. You have got to be crapping me. I'm actually going to count these. That's two. Obviously a steal for the Giants. Two hiddens. Obviously he's not. We, we literally drafted him. That'll be three. No, it's not. Two. You have got to be... I just counted the first 32 picks in the draft. And there was three hiddens. Oh my. That is crazy. That is absolutely nuts. Now, like I said... For regular franchise, if you're actually playing it, it's not the worst thing in the world because you do... Oh my, this guy is good. We missed on a talent and a half. But it's not the worst thing. But there are positions like DT, O-line, uh, corner. They're not easy. Yo, that guy might be the best rookie linebacker we've seen in a, a rookie draft this year. And I haven't been saying that statement often. 21... 91 speed, 89 excel, 87 agility. I gotta see his change of direction. 78. I would not want to be a tight end or a running back going against uh, Atlanta. I'm just gonna be honest with you. But wow, that was uh, that was not good. That was bad for pretty much everyone, unless you're the Falcons. Glad we had two first rounders. Am I right? Like, what is this, EA? Devontae Adams in free agency. Of course, we would not be a team that's a candidate for him. We have great wide receivers, and more importantly, we have a no money. Uh, unfortunately, though, the kickers, that kicker with X Factor is not here. So they took the kicker with X Factor, but they said, you know what? You can keep Devontae Adams, a true number one beast. That's great news. I'm so glad you found your kicker. Looks like Zerline's sticking with us. <laughs> I'm sad. So we trade Foster Moreau and Tristan Hill to the Patriots for pick 75. Completely fair, in my opinion. Of course, needs a contract, but it is what it is. It's still a starter. All right, we're an 85 overall going into year three. We're pretty damn solid. Like I said, we just got to keep playing games. The best wide receiving group in the league. Battle is good, but he is only star. Elliott, really good player. Dak, really good quarterback. I mean, what's his quarterback rating? Maybe 10th in the league for rating? Sixth, the best. Okay. O-line, best line in football. Again, finally, linebacking group, definitely an up-and-coming squad. You know, superstar development trait at 22. Can never go wrong there. I'm trying to find the superstar because I don't remember if we actually showed it. Uh, Mooring, I really wish Paris would have joined him, but he didn't. I moved Asante up because even though Jordan Lewis is an 83, their ratings are actually very similar. Lewis just has a little bit better play rec and awareness, but Samuel is the future here. It's a decent-looking squad. It really is, so... We should make it to the playoffs again and then maybe do some damage if we're lucky. All right, looking at re-signs. Once again, might not have anyone big here. I mean, yeah, Greg Zerline. Uh, oh, this kicker's there too. I do not know what we're going to do. But overall, uh, like I said, there's really not much we to re-sign. So I guess get some of the backups back and I don't know. Maybe we do re-sign Greg Zerline. I don't know. One of your four. Kind of depends on how he plays, I guess. All right, here we are headed to the playoffs and we... Have another 11-5 season. Ooh, almost choked away there. Of course, got smoked by the Vikings at the last week. Maybe even would have had a bye week if not for that. 4-4-4 four, four, four for yards. 30 touchdowns, 11 picks. So worst touchdowns and worst picks in a way. Although, Zeke having 22 touchdowns, obviously, definitely worsens the passing touchdowns, which, of course, hurts us a bit. Stefan Battle, I mean, it doesn't take much to go from normal to star, right? That should be a dev up, hopefully. 
CD Lamb, 851 uh, with nine touchdown shorts. Kind of a meh. Blocking, uh, that's hilarious. Uh, Chidobi could go to Superstar. Gatorade Man could go to X Factor. Same with Jalen. Sack totals. Damon Harrison with 10. Lawrence with 9. I like Damon Harrison coming in balling out. I mean, I don't think he literally could do that anymore unless he got all coverage sacks because he's just way too slow. He's he's there to eat up the inside for runs, but hey, whatever you want to hey, eat up the runs, that's gross. Zeke, Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year goes to none of our guys. Rookie of the Year, almost with the tight end, number 3. Zeke at best running back, O-line, Zach Martin, and that is pretty much it. Oh, actually, did we see kicking? Because Zerline does have a contract need. Ooh, I think it's time to move on, buddy. But regardless, going against the Los Angeles Rams, we're in 88, they're in 85. They have Sherman. He's old as hell, but I suppose it's Ramsey and Sherman. I don't know. Scary, I guess. All right, Dallas. Winning the Super Bowl, it's not easy, right? It's not easy, but... At least winning a playoff game will keep me happy, right? So here we are. 10 to 0 off the off the start. I ain't even mad at that. 10 to 7. Please, Dallas. Please just win the game. Okay, offense could do nothing. Defense is not helping, though. You've got to be kidding me with this game. Come on, Dallas. You've actually got to be joking me. Ooh, defense? Did the defense do? All right, offense, you got us. Oh, was it a field goal? Mm. I think that's over. Another season where we don't even win a playoff game. When we're not Dallas, they're gods. When we are Dallas, Zeke runs 2.1 yards per carry. Sweet stuff. Looking at the numbers, I really do not care. I just don't. That is so, so sad, dude. Well, gear up for another season, even though we can't really improve our team without destroying the cap. I don't. All right, headed to the Super Bowl, the Rams and Jets. Yep, just like you would expect in real life soon, the Jets and the Rams facing off in the Super Bowl. Love it. And Battle did go up to Star, which is it's pretty massive. It really is. That's what she's nothing. Uh, star development, like we just showed, uh, looks really solid, actually, so... It turned out to be good in the end, thankfully. Defensively, I do not think we had a single dev up, which really, really sucks. We did not, unfortunately. Not even the strong safety, but at least you got the tight end. And once again, uh, Zerline, see you later, buddy. You just, you know, you regressed a little bit and you weren't great there near the end. So, yeah, see you later, all these guys. We need a kicker. And then we'll have to take a look at some of the future contracts. That's becoming an issue here. Uh, hell, not even just contracts, but retirements could be on the, the horizon here with uh, the lineman being 32 years old. This uh, is windows closing, Dallas. You want to climb through? Oh, it's really closing. It is closing hard. Okay, so wide receiver maybe in the future, for the future. Line, we'll probably draft someone this season if there's someone there that's decent. Jalen could use an up, uh, you know, a new player there. Corner. So we're going to go for a corner. And that might be it. Corner and then O-line. Focus the corner and O-line positions, I suppose. But outside of that, there's not really much. Corner, O-line, wide receiver, I guess. And then get a free agency kicker. That's about the best we can do here. But in case you're wondering who's in free agency and, you know, starting of year four, here you go. There's some names. Not bad. Not bad by any means, but players we really don't need. Who was the X-Factor I saw? Nick Boyle, nice. We ended up making a risky play, but we offered a long-term contract to a star development left guard. He's pretty damn raw, but with guys like Zach Martin on the block soon, it might save us at the same time. Hey, we got Joey Sly, we got Redwine, we got uh, backup James Robinson. That's a pretty nice uh, little hit there. Fifth-year option, C, D's, not nah, Lamb. Uh, this is tough. This is tough. He's a really high over already. We're gonna we're gonna do the fifth year, yeah, because this could be our last season. Depends on uh, what I'm liking for the team. Because obviously, if we do really badly, and then I see that the team's dead, which I think it should be fine, I will just say see you later, everybody. Just like the Cowboys' real life season. All right, with pick 24 in the first round, we have a left tackle and a corner. 
We're probably going to lose our corner, but we're also going to probably lose a lineman. So, this is tough. We also had a wide receiver. Uh, it looks really solid, but I think right now the best look is one of these two guys. Of course, this is all dependent on hiddens. I like both of them, but I think I like Dina Poli a little bit better. Please, one hidden. Oh my lord, with these rookies. They're so bad. They're always so bad. We do have the other corner, uh, Casey Roach. A little bit worse, but maybe still worth it. I don't know. Disappointing, to say the least, though. Yeah, we're just going to advance. Who cares? We got our top two corners, at least, for a while. All right, so our next pick is probably Tim Kirksey. Another lineman. Can't wait to bust on that as well. Adrian Bradshaw, not bad. Very fast. Uh, I mean, I guess you just trade this down for, like, something mid-third. Went to the Bengals for a mid-third. All right, pick 14 in the third round. Whatever's there, we're going to take. Uh, the corner is still there. The guard is still there. And the wide receiver is still there. So, wide receiver is likely us to go... Hmm, you got both of these guys that could be likely to go... O-line, I mean, any of them could be hidden, obviously. I definitely want that Elliott guy. I'm going to take Casey Roach to the corner. And he's a good player, 72 overall. But once again, for the millionth time, no hidden development. Let's go slowly because I think one of the uh, players we wanted is going to go. So I kind of want to see what overall they may have been. They're both still there. Do we end up taking one? Adrian Bradshaw, 23. I mean, he can't really replace anyone just yet, so... All right, Tim Kirksey, be hidden, please. I love it. Can't wait for Bradshaw to be a god, by the way. 70 over, okay. Nothing crazy. Of a seventh-round middle linebacker that I'm probably willing to take as well. This guy does look pretty good, too. Let's move to our pick. Who cares? We have multiple fifth-round picks now with not really multiple players to take. Philip Langford looks decent enough. We'll take him. 65 overall, super user, but... 59 catching, not great at jumping. Uh, and I might actually take the center here because sometimes the undrafteds do go a little high. Nah, I'm not going to. Screw that. Fourth round from the Packers. Man, our drafts outside of the real one have been bad. I can kind of see why you guys do like when we do the real ones because at least there's a little bit of fun with the hiddens, but this is just, like, awful. Uh, Paul Elliott, probably the only hidden of the draft. He's not. I actually thought there was a really good chance. Not a bad pick at all, but yeah, I really thought there was a decent chance of him being hit, and not going to lie. But great, another draft on the drains. The drains. The multiple drain. We have a choice between a fullback or a kicker. We already have a kicker, so fullback it is. 71 overall, and if that reorder glitch comes up, I'm going to cry. Was there someone else we could have had? I think we could have had a corner in the first round. We'll take a look. I don't know if Acosta was the guy or not, but normal development if it was. And for the wide receiver, Adrian Bradshaw, I mean, they're all just bad players, honestly. All right, going on to potentially the last season, we'll see what we want to do, and yeah, that's that's about it. All right, we trade up Bayadaz for a fourth-round pick from the Bengals. All right, year four roster, same old, same old, top number one and two wide receivers in the league. Well, maybe not top one and two, but top duo. Uh, number six for Cooper, probably like 10 or 11 for Lamb, right? Number 10, uh, battles developing nicely. Center's kind of an if, but outside of that, looking good. Defensively, linebackers, really solid with Gatorade Man. Uh, Jalen Smith, obviously, someone you probably have to replace soon. And then uh, White, fast as hell, star development. He's all right. Can't have a perfect player at every spot. Wish Ford would have uh, gotten star by now, and I really wish Moring or Moing would have had some sort of better development of like XP by now, but he hasn't. Looking at the corners, okay corners, not perfect, but definitely good enough to get the job done. D-line, pretty damn solid. Uh, this could actually be the last year for a window. The window could be closing soon. It's winter, kind of. Is it winter once daylight's? I don't know, dude. I hate Anthony Schwartz. He's had two or three chances now. Blew them all. Here's the moment of truth. Re-signing time, and there's some names here. Two-year 29 for DeMarcus. It's actually not terrible. Uh, looking at Tyron Smith, that could be a really good timing contract. 
I think we're actually going to give it to him if we can afford it, which we can. Of course, you got to remember, we're re-signing players that already had a huge number, so it doesn't feel like that big of a, of a hit. Of course, for DeMarcus Lawrence, if you do want to keep him for even a year, it's worth just signing him because his, his tag is going to be like 22, 23 anyways. As much as I love Jordan Lewis, he's going to regress here in a moment. I think we just let him go and we draft corner, try to get lucky in free agency, one of the two. But yeah, get these offers in and then probably let Jordan Lewis go. We get Tyron, almost Lawrence. And finally, DeMarcus Lawrence. Sweet. That is really a cheap contract, man. Screw it, one more year. Why not? Thank you, Jordan. Made it easy on us. All right, I like it. That was a sweet little tender moment. And it all means nothing because we go 6-10. and 10. I will show you the schedule. I will show you the stats. We'll take a look at who wins the Super Bowl, and the rebuild will be over. EA can do whatever they want. Five straight losses. We lost seven out of the last eight with the Dallas Cowboys. The Jets. Cardinals, okay, maybe. Eagles, okay, maybe. Washington, meh. Dolphins, yeah, I guess. Bills, you know, I don't know. Eagles, I don't know. Seahawks, probably. Football, I don't know about all that. Giants, you know, it's so many losses we did not, absolutely did not deserve. Let's take a look at those stats. Take a look at the winner of the Super Bowl and then call it their Dak. 4,600 yards, 37 touchdowns, 20 interceptions, though. Rushing touchdowns were down. Uh, receiving Lamb finally had a good season there. Uh, looking at the defensive stats, maybe some dev ups. I don't know. Sacks, cool. Kicking, Joey Slyly missed one out of uh, two kicks. Well, one blocked one. Got one blocked out of two kicks. As far as awards go, Dak Prescott, best QB, best wide receiver than Lamb, yet offense. We only won six games. Nice. To the Super Bowl, the winner of the Super Bowl. Oh, wow. Colts, Falcons. Okay. I mean, it's four years down the line, so fair enough. But the Colts win the Super Bowl. We're a 91 overall squad that went 6 and 10. DevOps, CD Lamb actually goes to X Factor, which is cool. Doesn't really change much here, though. Uh, what is his abilities? I guess we'll take a look. Yakim up, Energize. Always Energizer. Reach for it. I mean, there's players that aren't even. Oh, Dak Prescott went to X Factor. Nice. The whole team went up to X-Factor, except for the fact that we still missed the playoffs. Nice. Uh, Gatorade Man went up to Superstar X-Factor, and he's an 88 overall. Uh, and that's really all I can say. This was, I guess, a failed rebuild, even though the team is absolutely loaded. Maybe we'll come back to this. Probably not, because I just can't stand EA, and the team's already like stacked. It's just, you know, you're simming and hoping for the best at this point. It is what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're Cowboys fans, hopefully you enjoy your match today, I suppose. Uh, also, probably a, a rebuild later tonight on twitch.tv slash care. If not a rebuild, something else. Maybe Washington. I do kind of want to test my uh, my OBS settings because I think I might have fixed the whole like latency issue. And whether you watch the streams or not, that's good for everyone because, you know, maybe means more content in general for Madden because I, I try to limit it to like one hour or so unless it's a rebuild on Madden on stream because it's just like... The quality is going to be kind of crap, but I really like streaming, uh, specifically Madden. Maybe not all the time, but like an hour or two every stream. But we'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Twitter, Jerome P. Care. Second channel, P. Care Plays. And then twitch.tv slash Jerome P. Care, of course. Hope you enjoy your Sunday. We'll be back with a stream tonight, more than likely. Once again, I can't guarantee anything because maybe football's good. I don't know. Whatever the case may be. But definitely a video tomorrow as well, maybe even on the second channel. Regardless, thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, uh, see ya!